This was the announcement put out by the royal household in Denmark. The President of the United States to visit Denmark. If you look at the bottom, it goes on to say it's at the invitation of Her Majesty the Queen. So this wasn't an official visit, it wasn't a working visit, it wasn't a let's get to know you, come along and have a nice cup of tea. This was a fully-fledged state visit that is now off after the country's Prime Minister rejected Donald Trump's offer to buy Greenland. Mr Trump says it was nasty of her to call his bid absurd. He says she should have just said, no, thank you, no, thank you. But they did several times last week. Again and again and again, they said no. Anyway, Ambassador Nicholas Burns uh, joins me now uh, to talk about it. Well, Ambassador, um, your initial thought when you realised that the President of the United States had cancelled a royal state visit on the back of a tweet. My initial thought, Richard, he's an embarrassment to our country. He is at, it's, it's shameful behaviour uh, by the President of the United States. I mean, imagine the Danish Prime Minister having the temerity to suggest that she doesn't want to talk about selling off part of her country. I mean, one can understand why the Danes are so exercised about this. The President has a history of going after NATO leaders, trying to embarrass them publicly. I'm sure he'll do it again at the G7 summit this weekend, unfortunately. And he has a history of going, um, uh, going against women publicly, uh, female leaders, Theresa May, Angela Merkel, and now the Danish Prime Minister. It's an embarrassing spectacle. Our presidents have never acted this way. We've had plenty of disagreements in the past, but you're civil to your best friends. Now, but here's the real rub. Uh, Ambassador, does it make a difference at the end of the day? Uh, who has the biggest toys? Who has the biggest playground? Whose economy is the strongest and the pl place where everybody wants to be? Does it long term, Ambassador, long term, does it make a difference? It'll make a difference as long as Donald Trump is president and until someone more sensible and rational uh, comes, it comes back to the White House. But I'll tell you this, Richard, I mean, the United States has not been able to uh, get a single European ally to commit to the anti-piracy coalition in the Gulf. Why is that? It's because the president has not been nice to them. And the president has actually taken policies, climate change agreement, the Iran nuclear agreement, that are against the interests of the European government. So I think there is a dramatic difference here and there's an impact when the president of the united states is so uncivil so contemptuous of our best allies in the world i would just remind you that the danes have committed in 17 years more than 10,000 of their troops on rotations into afghanistan and of course they've lost dead soldiers and they've had soldiers wounded so we owe them a lot and we certainly owe them common courtesies and i think as a percentage of troops it's higher than just than, than, than those uh, unfortunately lost by other countries as well so uh, the, the the but you see I, I keep coming back to this idea that what i'm also wondering is are we getting to a state where other world leaders realize there's no value in trying to be nice here you know, I, I see tonight Macron. Let's talk about Russia, for example. Um, Donald Trump wants Russia to be readmitted to the G7, the G8, which, of course, he was kicked out from in 2015-16 after Ukraine and Crimea. But Macron tonight basically saying, no, that would be rewarding the actions. Do you think world leaders are basically saying, we lose if we say yes, we lose if we say no, let's, let's do what we think's right? I think the majority of world leaders, the great majority, know exactly who Donald Trump is. They know that they can't depend upon him. This idea of President Trump that you'd bring Russia back into the G7 to make it the G8 again after Putin has done nothing to deserve it. I mean, what would the message be to thugs and dictators around the world if we did that? So I'm not surprised that President Macron and I wouldn't be surprised if Chancellor Merkel said no to the president. I don't think they'll agree to that at the G7 summit this weekend. And they shouldn't because that would just be a rewarding it, aggression and we've learned from the past not to do that. Is it possible that in, with Brexit being so febrile at the moment, so uncertain, that Donald Trump would deliberately do a trade deal just to annoy everybody else so that he gives Boris Johnson something thus kicking uh, sand in the eyes of the EU? 
Well, the, President Trump has said exactly, he's going to do exactly that. He wants to push a U.S.-U.K. free trade agreement after uh, a hard Brexit. That's a poke in the eye to the European Union. The president says that the European Union is a competitor. He's the first American president to say that. But I will say this, Richard. The Democratic leader of the Senate, Chuck Schumer, and the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, have warned the president that if a no-deal Brexit leads to a hard border, as it will, uh, in the, on the island of Ireland, and if it diminishes the G Good Friday Agreement, the Democrats will block the free trade agreement because we have too much at stake in our relationship with the Republic of Ireland, and we don't want to see a return to the troubles in Northern Ireland. So that's a real warning from the Democrats against President Trump. He may not be able to help Prime Minister Boris Johnson, uh, Boris uh, Johnson, excuse me, with a free trade agreement. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, as always.